Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm George. This is part two. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? You all right? You're the star of the show. Look, you're the star of the show. All right, you're the star of the show. Relax. You can get your 15 minutes of fame. But when this channel blows up, Cleo, um, I'm probably going to find another dog, though, because you're the, the low subscriber count dog. Once once this channel goes, then we've got to get a high, high subscriber dog, something fancy, you know? Maybe like three or four Rottweilers or something. Don't take it personal, Cleo, okay? You're my budget dog. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm George. This is Malaka Motorsports. This is part two of the VR6 Swap engine bracket kit. Today, we're going to be focusing on the 12 valve. Yesterday's video, we went over the 24 valve, showed how it mounted, showed the benefits, and now with the kind of cool thing, it's also available for the 12 valve. So um, to catch a lot of you guys up, for those of you guys that haven't swapped or haven't looked into swapping a VR6 into an Audi chassis, we've all had to use, pretty much all the 24 valve guys have had stock engine brackets that we could get in from the VR5 or the Phaeton, but they're imported, they're really expensive, even and really old too, and hard to get. The 12 valve guys don't have OEM brackets that work because the driver's side has two oil locations. One remote for the, the cooler and another one remote for the filter housing. Whereas the 24 valve had a single location that came out and had a bracket. So what did these guys have to do? They had to make their own brackets in order to fit them into the car. Now, a lot of you guys out there may fabricate and say, oh, that's no problem, I can make my own stuff. There's a lot of people, in fact, uh, probably a majority that don't want to fabricate engine brackets. They want a bolt-in solution. OEM parts only offered it for the 24 of, except now. Now with iBet Industries, we have the same bracketing system that we put on the 24 valve in a slightly different configuration that's also available for the 12 valve. Again, plate that meets the block, oil filter housing, everything built in one, taps for your oil feed for your turbo, taps on the top for more sensors or whatever you want, mounting solutions to the side of the block and to the back, an extra cap on the side, lots of oil options for those of you guys that are looking to feed one, two turbos, whatever the case may be. And then of course, the same L bracket that mounts to the side of it on the 24 valve, we're gonna install here on the 12 valve. So, without further ado, I wanna show you guys stop system, how to remove it, and then what the iBet Industries engine bracket kit looks like on the 12 valve and how easily it installs. So, let's get to it. You know, I wanted to kind of say this now, this is not knocking anyone who's made their own brackets or anything like that. By all means, if you're able to make them, if you're able to save the money and budget it, especially for a project like this, but, Again, the significance is, is now there's actually ready-made parts off the shelf that people are making, specializing in making this this swap more badass. So, again, take this for, you know, take it with a grain of salt. If you want to make your own, go for it. Use this as an example. Uh, but now there's better parts out there. Here we go. This is the driver's side engine bracket. Again, cleverly made. Just a little <laughs> not as convenient uh, as it would be if you're making custom stuff. So... A uh, little tip, if you're going to be making custom stuff for your car, just make sure it's accessible and make sure the custom doesn't bite you in the butt in terms of accessibility, you enjoying working on it or <laughs> being really pissed off while you're pulling off parts. But this sucks to do uh, while the engine is still in the car. So, um, yeah, and it's pretty solid. I'd say it's about a good 10, 15 pounds. It's whoever made it definitely wasn't melling around. Look at those welds. They just scooped it on there, and it's, it's, I'm pretty sure you could stand there and put the truck on it, it won't break. This thing's solid. Anyway, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So, here's without the driver's side engine bracket. Again, you have the oil filter housing and you have the oil cooler. That's the MoCal piece that we made, well, we installed and then had the fittings kind of set up. It's, it's a low profile setup, so for those of you guys interested, uh, again, local hardware store in terms of the fittings. And it does, and it clears the quote-unquote crack pipe, the water cooling pipe that goes over from the water pump to the thermostat housing over there. So, all right. So we're gonna remove the oil filter housing. Hopefully, they'll make a mess. And then we're gonna remove the oil cooler, and then start configuring and mocking up and getting Stav's new bracket on there and seeing what it looks like. So let's keep going. Again, don't make fun of my work table. We haven't built a custom workbench yet, so I'm kind of using this old oak table, or is it a birch table? I'm not sure, but. Lay down a towel, just basically removing this now. It actually comes off fairly simple, 13 mil bolts that are on there, and then the oil filter housing after that, and then I have to take off that uh, turbo oil feed line. Now, Stavra has a couple of uh, of a couple of sensors on there that we're gonna have to remove and retrofit on the iBed Industries plate. 
Uh, but again, that's going to be very simple. It's going to be easy for us to do, especially now since everything's so accessible. But again, this stuff comes off really easy. It's just easier to do uh, when it's outside the car. Um, inside the car, it wasn't so accessible. As you can see with the old engine bracket that was on there, the mount was just covering everything. So now uh, we're going to be installing everything in terms of the iBed plate uh, and kind of get everything mocked up and ready. So yeah, this is just me running around, grabbing tools, trying to find stuff, doing things last minute, you know, the, the right way. Making sure everything's clean pretty much before I kind of put this plate on there. So just be careful. You don't want anything getting in your oil. And that's pretty much what I'm doing, just double checking. All right, cool thing about this is, um, so I'll just put this back so you guys have an example. If this was your normal oil cooler setup and we just removed it, this is the only thing that's gonna come off, this little fitting. And this is where the oil cooler used to go. And now I'm removing that, okay? You don't have to throw it away, but you're not gonna use it. And I'll show you why you're removing it because that's gonna get replaced by this. And again, it's all gonna make sense here in just a second. So again, all the O-ring surfaces, make sure that they're lubricated, all right? There's another oil port here on the side that goes on the side of the block that I'm uh, plugging up that I won't need because basically our oil feed's gonna come from the front. Here we go, lining it up. And look how that lines up with the block. So it bolts up to the back side, uh, and then it's gonna go right here in the center. So we'll get this big bad boy started. So it kind of just holds everything in place. And there's your base plate. This is how your plate's gonna be installed. This is how it's gonna look. Um, here, I'll even grab the GoPro real quick so you guys can see it. All right, and we'll start lining everything up and screwing it. And again, if this is anything like my 24 valve uh, bracket setup, the tolerances are very tight for specific reasons. So guys, keep in mind as you guys are installing these, just know that you're gonna probably have to just be careful, use a light, don't screw anything too tight because I'm telling you, you'll probably strip it. So be very careful and very cautious in terms of how you guys are installing this stuff. Camera, my bad. And you guys don't have to see this, we'll fast forward this real quick. Passenger and driver side brackets are in. Passenger, look how small this is. Such a tiny silhouette compared to that giant steel bracket that Stav had before. We had to run the oil line around because there was just no room without potential rubbing on running out on the inside. So now we'll be able to cut this line in half, reroute it, but it absolutely looks great. And again, standard 1.8T, 2.7 engine mounts will work and bolt right up to this engine bracket. So, and it still has that same angle as the VR5 and also as the B5 subframe, so everything will bolt up. And then let's go over to the driver side. Again, this is, this is the important side as well because there was never any bolt-on brackets that were available. In fact, they're still not for the 12 valve. So now you have something that's not only a bolt-on bracket, but also something that encompasses the oil filter housing and makes things a lot easier by giving you more oil filter options. You got your oil cooler with the two fittings on top and lines going out to your oil cooler itself. And then you have your filter, which again, as soon as you unscrew it, drop it down, let it drain, and you got that really cool little ramp that goes in the bottom and drips right into your drip pan. Uh, so this way you can collect all your oil without getting it all over the place. Uh, there were two mounts here that we didn't utilize because they didn't include the hardware. And uh, when I spoke to Asami, he says, well, everyone likes to do something a little different. We left it open. People may want to thread this. People may want to install it from here. People may want to slide a bolt through. So what I did was I told him, I said, listen, uh, I think it would be advantageous for you to include those two bolts already in the kit and just make it an option. If anybody wants to change it from there, they can. Uh, it sounded like he agreed. So these may be included inside the kit just to make it, just to give you more mounting options and, and utilize every port on the side of this little bracket and you can kind of secure it a little bit better. And this actually secures to the block itself. And then, and then on the bottom, it actually goes through the adapter plate. So you could actually run one bolt all the way through and then put a nut on the outside. Now that we'll secure the adapter plate, the block and the engine bracket all together. So again, it's gonna be user preference on however you set it up. It's entirely up to you. Uh, but this is awesome. The 12 valve VR6 
And again, I'm excited that regardless of all the joking that me and Stav do with the 12 valve versus the 24 valve, I'm really excited for the 12 valve guys because now they have a solid engine bracket mounting bolt-in solution as they didn't have it before. Again, the 24 valve benefited from stock parts being able to be used, but those didn't fit the 12 valve because of the different oil setup that the OEM setup has on the side of the block. And now you guys got one. So instead of spending three or four hundred dollars on a driver's side, you know, factory bracket, or maybe spending that kind of money paying someone to fabricate something, now you have off-the-shelf parts that bolt up, and we'll let you know if it works. Again, this is not an endorsement video. This is a test video. We installed them. They look great, but we still haven't put miles on them. We still got to get out to get the cars together. Once all the craziness from COVID kind of fades away and companies start opening up, we're able to get the parts we need to put the cars back on the road, and we'll start beating the crap out of this thing to see if it holds up. But brackets being steel and sturdy and large and, and just brolic as hell, I have no doubt that they'll last. But I'll let you know about the functionality. I'll let how oil changes with these brackets feel. And I, you know, if the design actually fo follows through and it actually does what it's supposed to do while it's on the car and if it's more convenient. So kind of really excited to get that on with the testing. So this is gonna be the conclusion of part two, part three for this specific segment. And we'll make our own little playlist for this on the channel so you guys can go back to it whenever you want. Uh, as soon as we get a few thousand miles on the cars again. So I hope this has been at least informative for you guys and i hope a lot of you that have been considering doing this swap have now maybe gotten a little bit more confidence knowing that there's some aftermarket parts maybe more support now for the 12 valve especially and i understand why a lot of people want to go 12 valve it's a lot more affordable it's more budget friendly and they still make a ton of power and they sound amazing so uh i'm going to conclude this video with that if you guys have any questions at all please include them in the comments below you all right I think Cleo's ready to go. She's about done for the night. If you guys have any questions or comments, please put them down below and we'll try to get to them as best way as we can. Again, if you're not following us on Instagram, go to Malaka Motorsports on Instagram and check out our Facebook group, Audi Performance Builds and Projects, and also Malaka Motorsports on Facebook. Go. Go on there and check us out. If you don't have a Facebook, make a profile, put a basic picture on there, and join because the people in these groups are doing amazing things with their cars. Companies are posting up these new developments and things that they're working on, and it's only in that group. Whew, that was a lot that I had to get out. Without further ado, guys, thank you for watching. Appreciate the support. Hope all of you stay safe. We'll see you guys in the next video. I'm George. This is Malaka Motorsports. We'll see you next time.